Welcome back to the channel. It's been a little while since I drove my 2009 G8 GXP manual, uh, and that's because the last time I drove it, uh, the clutch went out on it. And a lot of people asked, where's it been? So I said, well, the clutch went out on it, I drove it home, and I parked it. And I'll work on it when I have time. Well, that was like two years ago. Well, the where was it question was followed up with, how did you drive it home if the clutch went out on it? Uh, and now we're going to explain how I was able to drive a car when the clutch doesn't work. So there's a couple different ways that a clutch can go out. And this is the clutch that's fully engaged and won't disengage. This is a hydraulic system, so it could be a number of things. It could be a bad master, bad slave, bad line in between, or a bad linkage. Uh, don't know yet, haven't really looked at it. Uh, but that's usually what goes wrong with these. Uh, if you have a regular cable, it could be a broken cable. If you have a manual linkage, uh, the linkage could have just come apart. Or if you happen to drive an older Ford F-150, F-250, F-350, uh, it could be because the firewall is broken. Yes, the firewall. The firewall cracks so much that when you push the clutch on, the firewall moves and the clutch pedal doesn't. That's only a Ford F-150 thing. And showing my age because that was way back in the 80s and 90s. So. If you have a clutch that will not engage, that's probably because it's worn out and you're SOL. You're gonna need a tow truck to get you home. There's no way to limp it home like we're going to do today. So this one is engaged, won't disengage. I'll show you how to drive it. So before all the experts come at me in the comments, I do need to explain that yes, the hydraulic clutch could not disengage just because it's low on hydraulic fluid. But since it's a closed system, the chances of it being low on Hydraulic fluid, because of one of the aforementioned problems, is very likely. So that's why I mentioned those as problems. Uh, so now let's explain how we're going to drive this thing when our clutch does not disengage. Basically, when the engine is off, that's our clutch disengaged. So we want to, before we get started, decide where we're going to go. So if we're going to go forward, we leave the engine off, we put it in first gear, and that's how we start it up. If we're going to go in reverse, you put it in reverse. If you need to go from reverse to first or vice versa, you need to shut it off. Once that's done and you have it in gear and you get it started, shifting is pretty easy. You just get the engine RPMs up a little bit higher than when you would normally shift and slowly, very gently pull it out of gear. It'll come out no matter what if with a little tension and then pull it back into the next gear. So if you're coming out of first, you lightly pull it into second gear. Don't try to force it. And as the engine RPMs match, you can even flip the throttle a little bit and help match them. But if you've over revved it a little bit, as the engine RPMs come down, it's very easy to just lightly guide it back into second gear and then just do the same thing from second to third, third to fourth, fourth to fifth, fifth to sixth, if that's where you're trying to go with this. Uh, if you really only need a couple gears, well then you just stop shifting whenever you're going the speed you want to go. Uh, downshifting works the same way. It's a little slower, a little harder to get it into gear uh, than when you're upshifting, but it still works the same way. Uh, if you have to come to a stoplight, you got to shut the vehicle off because uh, with the clutch dis disengaged, it's just going to lurch forward until it dies. Now this one doesn't totally not disengage. It's got about half there's a lot of air in the system and it's probably because of the clutch slave cylinder, which is not gonna be a fun job, but I haven't climbed under there to look at it and verify that for sure. So now that I've explained to you how it works, let's take it for a ride so I can show you everything in practice. So our car is off. We put it in first gear because we're gonna go forward, wait for traffic to clear and start the car up. We push the clutch down because even if it doesn't do anything, we still need to push it down for the starter to engage because it's got a neutral safety switch. You can see from the corner of the screen, I'm not using the clutch at all. Let off the gas, pull it out a second and push it up in the third and then gently slides in there. Pull it out a third and pull it back into fourth and now we're in fourth gear. And now we become an expert at timing lights because if we come to a stop, we're going to have to shut the car off. So if we just slow down to a crawl and upset all the people behind us, we won't have to shut the car off. So now we'll pull it back down in a second and start going again. Let off the gas, push it up in a third. And now we have to time this turn. And we're gonna head up here. We'll just coast all the way up here because we're definitely gonna get stuck at this light. There's no getting around it. It's never green for me, so. We'll just 
let the car run, it's in neutral right now. That way we don't have to turn off the air conditioning. So we'll get ready to disengage our clutch. I mean, shut the vehicle off if our light does change. Three days later. I'm watching the lights for the cross street, so I know it's gonna change pretty soon. So we'll get ready, put it in first gear and start our car up and start going. When you're up shifting to the next gear, you just pull it into the gear or push it into the gear just hold light pressure on it and as the RPMs come down it'll slide right in. If you try to force it back that's when you get the nasty grinding sound to let you know you went out of bounds. And now we're going to upset the internet experts that are telling me I'm driving way too fast on this road. To which I reply, show me the speed limit sign and I will adhere to that speed limit. But since there isn't one, I guess I can go as fast as I want. At least that's what I'm going to tell the officer when he pulls me over. If you're wondering how I know when to let off the gas and shift, it's all done by sound and feel for me. Every car is going to be different depending on gear ratio, vehicle speed, engine load, any of those factors. So it's never going to be the same for every vehicle. We'll wait for traffic to clear and start our car up and start going again. Pretty much do the same thing all the way home. As long as I don't hear any grinding sound, you're really not hurting the trans all too bad. Although the starter is getting a workout. So this is how you get it home and save yourself a tow bill. Well that concludes our how to drive a manual without a clutch tutorial. Uh, maybe next time we'll actually fix it because I proved I can drive it without a clutch, but that doesn't mean I want to. So since I haven't actually tried to diagnose it yet, you might be wondering how I'm so positive it's the slave cylinder. And that's easy. I have bad luck because if a part is bad, chances are it's going to be either the most expensive part or the hardest one to change. And that's just how my luck works. If it's the clutch master, it's not too bad. It's just clipped onto our clutch pedal bolts onto the bracket, got a couple lines going to it. You can do most of it on the ground, you just gotta lift it up to bleed it. Pretty easy job. So if that's all it is, we'll be up and running in a matter of a couple minutes. However, if it happens to be the slave cylinder, which I'm assuming it is, that's a little bit more involved. We have to pull the transmission out because our slave cylinder is inside of the bell housing. So if we're going to pull the transmission out, I might as well fix everything else. We're opening a whole new can of worms because I need a drive shaft center bearing, uh, one of the U-joints has got a little play in it, so I'd go ahead and change that. And since we're taking everything down, we might as well throw a new clutch in it. So we're going to end up basically doing a whole bunch of extra work just to replace our actual problem. If it does happen to be our clutch master, we can put all this stuff off for a later date. I had all this for another project I was going to do, so I might just have to order more, more parts for the other project. So we'll find out if it's a master, we'll definitely get that done in the next couple of weeks. If it's a slave cylinder, well, we might have to put it off until we have some time to do it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.